Hello, this is LJ Bothell with a Microsoft Excel video on pivot tables part two. The first video I made was how to make pivot tables with the recommended pivot table option in your insert tab and ribbon. This one is going to be on how you can make a pivot table completely from scratch without a recommended one and then to explore that um, option just a little bit. So what I've done here is I'm using the same core information, but in this case, I actually turned what was a data set of information into an actual Excel table. And I've named the table. Let's go over to the table design. I just named the table sales and I put a total row on it so we have an idea of what the total of all the sales are. And then I've only put accounting format on the, the, the uh, total, but I noted up here this is sales in dollars. So this way we could demonstrate that you can also do pivot tables from Excel tables, whereas the other video was doing a pivot table from a data set that was not in an Excel table that already has built in um, filter buttons and so on. And we don't actually need to filter anything in here, so I'm going to turn off the filter button. Now I'm just going to click anywhere in the table. I'm going to go to insert and I want to create a pivot table from it. And the norm here in a recommended pivot tables is that when you create a recommended one, it will create a new tab, a new worksheet tab and put it in over there. In this one, we may have a choice. So what I'm going to do is I've clicked just pivot table and I'll select a table or a range. And since I clicked inside of an Excel table object that's named sales, Excel says, oh, you want this whole table. Then I also get to choose where I want the pivot table that's going to be created to be placed. Now, since this is kind of a big table and I don't want to clutter up this worksheet for this video and for your learning process, I'm going to put this into not the existing worksheet, but a new worksheet. I could put it in the existing worksheet and I could scroll down and say, well, I could put the pivot table below it. You could click on a cell like this, but we're not going to do this. We're going to do a new worksheet. And I'm not going to analyze multiple tables at this point. I'm just simply going to be making one brand new pivot table. I'm going to click OK. Now we're in a new sheet here, and this is based on the sales, but we don't really know what this pivot table is going to be. Right now, its default name is Pivot Table 6. I can read that up here, and then if I click on the pivot table um, that doesn't have anything in it, I can click um, into the um, Design tab. Nope, there's nowhere to put a name there. And there's nowhere to put anything here because we haven't really done anything with it yet. So what do you do if you get one of these? Well, again, you'll want to go over to the pivot table fields. And this will give you the place to start building your pivot table and previewing the kind of things that you'll see. Now, if for some reason you can't see the pivot table fields, you just get this. It's like, um, um, what, what, what do I do next? Click somewhere in where the pivot table will go look for the pivot table analyze tab and ribbon look for the icon that reads show and then click field list and there you go and anytime you click away from the pivot table the, the, the field list will disappear so you can work on other data if you have it in here if you click on this this is where your pivot table fields go now since we know this is coming from a sales table and if we look at the sales table we have order dates, we have regions, sales reps, product names, categories, subcategories, sales in dollars. We can look at anything in here. This time, let's look at see. Um, we also could see what those columns are over here. These are the fields or the columns that are in the original table it came from. So I could pick any of these. I'm going to just pick two of them. Now, do I want to look at counts or do I want to look at sales? I'm going to look at sales again. Usually if I do a pivot table, I want to know what kind of money we're dealing with. And then I want to look at uh, sales by product name. And I can choose this and see this is what I get. Now, what if I don't want sales? One thing you would note is that when you make a pivot table, the first thing you choose is what the priority of the rows will be. And so what I would like to do is find out in the sales reps what categories they've sold. 
So in this case, this is strictly an informational pivot table. It's not really going to calculate anything for me if I don't choose to add sales or I don't choose to add an, a, a column for counts. But in this case, I could just take a quick look at this as a summary of the other table and look at read that this particular sales rep only sold products that work from the ingredients category that um, G here sold things that were from the food, the ingredients and the seasoning category. And then from here, I could go in and choose to um, uh, filter. So say I really want to only know what uh, I, uh, uh, who worked on ingredients. Well, it doesn't look like I could choose this, but let's take a look and see what the value filters are. Do we have values? We don't actually have any values. But label filters, value filters. Yep, see, there's no values over here. So we're only looking at the rows of the sales rep, and then we're looking at them by category. So this becomes a little harder here. What I could do instead is turn these off and then put category on first and then sales rep. Then this way I could see, well, okay, I only really want to know about the food category. I don't want to know about the ingredients, or seasonings, or cookery. And I can click OK, and then I can say, oh, okay, so for the food this month, these particular sales reps look like they all sold food. Okay, I don't know what that tells me, but at least I could pivot the table to do that sort of thing. I can again decide I don't want to look at any of these things. So let's go ahead and before I decide to make any changes to my pivot table fields, I would want to unfilter something that I did. So here I did a filter. I want to clear the filter from category. Then I could come over here and I could turn both of these off. And I could say, well, by region, I want to know what subcategories were sold. So in this case, Interestingly, uh, you know, see what I'd really like to be able to do, and this is where I think one has to add extra rows and columns and rearrange things, is if I really wanted to know, you know, to, well, let's take a look here. I can, ah, this is great. Okay. So in this case, even though we're looking at regions, I don't want to see everything here. All I want to do is see which regions handled aged, which would be like aged cheeses and stuff like that, and then which ones uh, look. Uh, did preserved, which might be preserved things like chutneys or dried meats or whatever, or dried vegetables, and there we go. So the Midwest, the East, the Central, the Northwest, and the South all did um, some preserved and or aged. So that's sort of one of the keys of how pivot tables work. So the thing you'll want to keep in mind is that when someone asks you a question that's like, okay, I have this big table of data and I want to basically summarize it. And I want to know in the regions, which regions handle this, this, and this kind of sale. Then what you're getting in that question is, okay, they want to know about the regions and they want to know about the sales and then they want to know about the this, this, and this kind of sales. So when you start setting up a pivot table, you'll want to keep those things in mind to play with the pivot table until you get what you want. As you become more familiar with pivot tables, you'll know right away that, well, okay, and I'm going to go ahead, before I do anything, I'm going to clear the filter. I'm going to turn this off. So we want to know what region sold this, this, and this uh, in sales. So we're going to have sales, and then we're going to have and the sales are always the values because it's what can be calculated. And we're going to look at, sorry, not sales rep, but region. But then we want to look at the product name. So in this particular case, let's find out how much we could filter. In here, it would be filtering the regions. And there is no filter for sum of sales. So on the other hand, we may want to take the product name out of the row labels and let's drag over and see what happens when we put it into columns. Well, we get a very interesting looking table here, but in this particular case, then I could come down here and say, well, and this was for ingredients. I don't actually want ingredients. So I'm going to go stop before I do anything else and say, no, I didn't want ingredients. I want categories and I want the categories to not be in rows. I want them to be in columns like this. Okay, there we go. So this way, I could come over here and I could choose to filter out regions. I could filter out column labels and say, well, I only want to see the food. And there we go. See? So pivot tables could be a lot of fun. 
And again, when you finish making the pivot table you want, you can always copy and paste a copy of it in another sheet in case you want to reuse that particular pivot table. But when you're done with it, in this case, this is sum of sales and money. Well, basically, it's actually, uh, that's what the whole pivot table is. But the row labels are regions. So I could overwrite that. And then the column labels would be the category of products. And that's what makes that make a little bit more sense. And then I can widen things. And then in here, I don't have to call it sum of sales. I might just say, you know, um, let's see, March 2022 sales. If I happen to know the table I was doing things in was only March. Or I might do, you know, 2022 all sales like that. And then over here, I can come in and say, OK, the first column, I will make accounting. Excuse me, not the first column, the first row. And then I can make the last row accounting. And in this case, the category, since only one category of products was selected, then the grand total and the category of products is the same. But if I come in here and say, well, you know, I'd like to filter two of them. So we'll do that in seasonings. Then here we go. We can see that of this grand total between these two types of categories, this is what we've got, the grand total of how much was um, sold from both of them together. You can see it broken down. And down here, because this looks a little funny, I can go ahead and put this like that. And there you have a pivot table. And this one is empty. It has zero in it. It didn't pull in anything because apparently there was nothing in the original table for it. So that's a little bit about building a pivot table completely from scratch and the kind of things you could do with it. So again, have fun. And I hope this was helpful.